Hello, and welcome to my talk on how our organization is using FileMaker to collect data, which has been adopted company-wide, and how we're grown beyond our own organization. My name is John Rep. I'm a professional engineer and a member of LZ Technology Corporation senior staff. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. First of all, I enjoy talking at technical forums, and I've also presented at the FileMaker Developers Conference in 2018. I've also offered over 60 technical publications in the corrosion and coding industry, including contributing to three textbooks in that subject. More importantly, though, I'm a father of six wonderful young women, ranging in age from 8 to 16, so from grade school all the way into high school. And the really scary thing for me right now is my oldest is actually starting to drive. I'm also married to a wonderful woman named Christine who puts up with my extensive work travel and my tech addiction, especially for anything Apple. Before we jump into the presentation today, I wanted to give a little plug for my industry. It happens that many people don't really think about the corrosion industry or even know that it exists, but it's the reason why our cars don't rust away as quickly as they used to in the 70s and 80s, because a lot of people are putting time and effort into studying paints and corrosion itself. So when you think about somebody says, that's about as much fun as watching paint dry, realize that there are a whole host of people that actually do that for a living, and some of us actually enjoy it. Well, maybe not the drawing part. So when I was thinking about this session and preparing it, one of the things I was trying to think is, how would I hope people left the session? What do I want them to get out of it? And what I'm hoping is that at the end of this talk, you'll feel enthusiastic about using FileMaker for your organization, for your projects, or for your data needs. Um, what I found is that FileMaker is really an easy platform to get into. And that's what I'm going to basically talk about, how we got into it and then how our organization has really adopted it and how we're growing it beyond just, you know, our company itself. And so to me, it's, you know, as it's promoted, a low code, easy to get into environment. You can start out with some of the starter solutions and really kind of hit the ground running pretty rapidly and have something that is very impressive and you can show it to your customers, you can use it with your other uh, employees and really have a robust solution almost right out of the box. And then from there, the sky's the limit. With all the features that are continually being added and all the things that can be done with FileMaker, you can grow it and make it into anything that you want or exactly what you need. So with that, I figured I'd start by telling you a little bit about what our company is doing with FileMaker. And before I get too much into details, I figured I'd start with how we began. So to talk about how we began, let's first talk a little bit about what we do and who Elsley is. So we're a company that does engineering and research in the coding and corrosion space. So a lot of our projects are very heavily data driven. So we rely on data and information to make decisions, to inform our customers or to evaluate new materials. So when we were looking at you know, the stuff that we did, we always look to, you know, advance the state of the art or make things work better or make our data collection happen, you know, more efficiently and provide better information in more rapid fashion to our customers. So, you know, we were looking for something that was flexible, that allowed us to collect our data, which can be in the form of text, numbers, photographs, pretty much anything, um, to take that information, correlate it, you know, store it and then be able to review it and analyze it to make um, decisions for our customers or to recommend decisions for our customers. Uh, we wanted a mobile platform, something that was available in the field. Um, a lot of the stuff we do, we go out to our customers' locations to look at their issues, look at their situation, and then we'll try to, um, you know, bring it back into our lab sometimes and replicate those scenarios or look at those situations. But we need to be able to go out and collect the data at the point where it's being generated. And we also needed something that was open-ended, but also can be standardized. And that kind of sounds like an oxymoron a little bit, but basically what we're saying is we want to collect data in a standardized fashion using proven metrics and proven ways of collecting data. But we also want it to be open because we're doing, you know, sometimes very fundamental research or basic type of research. We're looking at different materials and different systems. And sometimes it's the things that you don't plan for that give you the best results. It's those things that, you know, maybe are just a footnote somewhere or just like somebody jotted something down real quick and all of a sudden you realize that was the most important thing that got out of that project. And so when I was thinking about this, um, you know, one of the movies that kind of inspired me for, for what we did with FileMaker was the movie I Am Legend. And so in that movie, uh, Will Smith's character is seeking a cure for a disease. 
and he's actually using his computer to log data, to record information. He's even got live video streaming from a headset to that computer. And when I saw that, I thought to myself, that's what I want. That's what I need, a robust system that you can easily capture the types of data that we're generating. So what have we done with FileMaker? And I'm gonna talk about two specific tools that we've really been using recently with our organization. So the first one we call our panel inspection tool. It's really our sample inspection tool for, for a better word. Um, but we work in the coding corrosion space. And so a lot of times we have what are called test panels. Small rectangles painted up with different coatings, different scenarios to replicate different conditions. And so our engineering research programs really rely heavily on the data generated from those systems. And the tests are designed to simulate actual operational conditions or to simulate the uh, different ways that these materials are going to be put together under actual uh, production scenarios. And so when, what we're doing is we're looking to simulate those environments, you know, whether it's in a natural environment or a laboratory environment, and we're looking at the reaction of those materials to that environment. So sometimes we're comparing against the base condition. Sometimes we're looking at it versus just a host of other materials to select the best product or products. And so what we need to do is we need to collect data over time and we need to collect a lot of data. Usually it's multiple data points across multiple samples over, you know, it can be anywhere from a year to two years worth of study to really understand how these materials are going to function. And then, you know, the data that we're collecting, they can be numerical ratings, they can be photographs, it can be instrumented uh, deterioration of samples, whether it's changes in color, changes in gloss, loss of material. And then afterwards, we might even do a post analysis destructive testing where we pull these parts apart, we take the coatings off, we look at underneath the coatings to really understand what's going on. So we need a system that was able to take, you know, very um, detailed data, um, very structured data, but also in a unstructured format so we can take any of the information that we need because sometimes you're looking at different tests and you want to measure different things. So that's where, you know, we started looking at FileMaker and that was something that was really beneficial for the, from the platform was being able to take that kind of data. Uh, the, other, uh, the other thing that we did with FileMaker is we have what's called the Vehicle Corrosion Survey Tool, or VCST. And so where this really started was I was looking to you know, improve or, or basically not have to go back to the office and uh, enter in a lot of data and then you know, organize a lot of photographs when I'd go out in the field and look at a vehicle. So, you know, we started with a little tool on, on the original iPhone 3G, or not the original, but the iPhone 3GS, so a very early model. Um, to inspect different military equipment. And that kind of grew into an actual program that we started using for the Army where we were looking at their systems and inspecting a lot of their equipment. The idea here is to capture certain identification information so we know exactly what systems we've looked at, what types of platforms, where they were located, how old they are, what the mileage is, and things like that. So we had you know, information that would tell us about what we were looking at. And then we were just looking at the, the degradation of those assets, the corrosion and coating damage that we saw. And we would group those into the different areas of the vehicle so that way we knew where we were seeing most of the damage or were there certain areas on certain platforms where you saw more degradation. But from there, it was pretty much a free-form collection of data. And that's not to say you could just write down anything. What we did was we allowed people to go around the vehicle in the way that made sense to them and only inspect the parts where they actually were observing degradation. We weren't trying to pigeonhole everybody to say, you must look at these five parts because they'll look at those five parts and move on to the next vehicle. What we wanted them to do was look at the vehicle and tell us where the issues were. You know, see where the corrosion is jumping out at you because those are the areas that the soldiers are going to see and those are the areas that they're going to want to address or that they're going to see as problems. So we wanted to have that same kind of experience. And again, the FileMaker platform, because there was a lot of flexibility in the way we could set this up, you didn't have to have a predefined template for every single part you wanted to look at. We could populate part names, we could look at you know, certain areas, but from there it was freeform how they wanted to actually survey the equipment and actually inspect it. And the last thing is we wanted to make sure that we had photographic evidence tied to each one of those inspections. And you know, we didn't think you know, one photo was enough. We thought maybe three might be enough, but who knows? So we were able to make that open-ended. So instead of saying, you shall take one photo, you should take five photos, or whatever the number is that we would have in our mind, we said, we want you to take photos that represent the condition that you're seeing. So they're able to just openly inspect and look at the vehicle and decide that we want this number of photos, 
and, and you know, take a number of photos that appropriate demonstrates what the issues are. So if they need to take an overview and then a close up, if they need to take 10 photos apart, they need to take 100 photos apart. They have that flexibility and that's built into the FileMaker platform and the relational database. Set. Now, the, the tool itself, we've been using it for about five years now. Um, we've inspected a little over 15,000 assets, uh, almost 240,000 parts, and we have over 377,000 photos that this tool has stored within it. It allows us to analyze that data, look across platforms, look across different locations, and quickly and easily pull information for our Army customer. So that's just another success that we've used with the FileMaker tool. So next I want to talk a little bit about the experience of FileMaker within LZ and our organization to kind of understand why it's kind of grown and where it started from and where it is today and where it's going beyond. So again, I'll start with what I call the early days. And so again, it started with me just wanting to do better data collection, wanting to be able to take information, go in the field, collect information, not have to spend a lot of time back in the office pulling all these photos together, you know, hoping that I got the right information written down. You know, sometimes you get back to the office and you realize, man, I really wish I would have caught that, or I really wish I would have inspected this. So to provide a t little bit of a structure and a tool to actually encourage that. So like I said before, it started with the iPhone 3GS and a very simple tool that I put together. You know, I probably you know, spent a couple hours putting this together, so it wasn't anything too complicated, but it kind of served its purpose. Now there were limitations, the hardware wasn't where it needed to be, there was quite a few crashes and stuff like that, but it worked and it seemed like it, was, it had benefit. So I observed the potential and started to enlist some other folks to try to collect data that also had iPhones, or more importantly, when the iPad got the camera on the back. Then I realized, hey, I've got a device here that has a lot of screen real estate. I can put you know, all these fields that I want to collect on one screen, and you can actually read it. So instead of having to flip through multiple screens to just enter the information about a vehicle or about a part, you're able to do that all on one screen. So from there, you know, we had a few folks within the organization start to use it, and they saw the benefit too. Again, it didn't work perfectly, but it wasn't a complete disaster. So we said, hey, this actually has some merit. We think we'll try to use this a little bit more as we go out in the field. As luck would have it, kind of right around the end of that time, the, the 13, 2013 timeframe, there was a contract coming out with the Army where they were actually having to go out and survey their fleet. Now, the Army maintains hundreds of thousands of pieces of equipment. So they knew that they weren't going to survey everything, but they wanted to do a sampling. And they were targeting a few hundred pieces of equipment at each of their installations. Still, that's a fairly you know, large population of data that you're trying to collect. And they didn't want to just go and just give everything a single rating or anything like that. They wanted to get some detailed data, and they really wanted to understand what their systems looked like. So we were one of the bidders on this contract. And you know, I had in the back of my head that what I've been doing with FileMaker would be a perfect fit for this. Now, granted, I didn't have a tool that was completely ready. I wasn't an experienced FileMaker developer. I, ho I cobbled something together that kind of worked, but it kind of worked, and I still had to, you know, manipulate things to get it to work right sometimes or to get the data out. But I knew there was something there. And uh, more importantly, I was able to convince the customer that there was something there. And so, lo and behold, they got us the contract. They said, you know, we, we believe you guys can do a good job. We understand what you guys do from the technical side. We, we know that this is going to be a challenge, but we like your approach. And so from there, FileMaker really moved from what was a hobby for us to a necessity because we had to actually deliver. We actually had to put forth our, our promise that we made to these guys to say we're going to develop this data or develop this program to collect this data. And more importantly, they wanted real-time or near real-time information back to the field. So we would go out on a one-week engagement, hit the ground running Monday morning, leave on Friday afternoon, and Friday afternoon before we left, we were expected to sit in the commander's office, provide him an out brief, and say, sir or madam, this is what we saw in your equipment. These are some quick recommendations. It wasn't end-all, be-all, but we wanted to give them a snapshot so they can quickly come away with, hey, here's some actions that I can do right now while I wait a few days, a few weeks for your report to come out. So again, the FileMaker program really kind of helped us make that a reality. And by 2015, we had a team of eight people that would go out, do these surveys, and quickly turn around this information. So it was a success for us. So the next two years were really where we started to find our stride with FileMaker. And you know, the project, like I said, with the Vehicle Corrosion Survey Tool, 
was a huge success for us. We started enlisting other people in the company. So we would have, you know, a consistent team of eight, but we would pull from different resources. So it wasn't always the same people going out for one week a month. You know, we were able to pull on other resources and get other people involved. In doing so, other people in the organization saw that, hey, this tool actually works pretty well and it can do a lot of other things. I wonder what else it can do. So go back to the panel inspection tool I talked about a little bit. I had kind of been playing with that a little bit in my spare time. Again, I was a, a FileMaker hobbyist before this program. And then once this program hit, I became, you know, a dedicated FileMaker person for a few months anyway on this one, uh, one project or, or one tool that we were developing. But with the success and with the stuff that I learned from feedback from our, our uh, customer as well as our employees using the tool, I used that to really try to build up that uh, panel inspection tool and make that a better program. One of the drawbacks to it was it really wasn't much faster. As a matter of fact, it was a lot slower than just going out there with a piece of paper and a pen, writing down your inspections, taking a few photos with a digital camera and getting back to the office. And a lot of times you're doing this out in the heat and the sun and people just wanted to kind of get out there, get their data and get back to the hotel. Hey, I'll transcribe everything in the hotel. I don't really care about, you know, being there and, and transcribing data. I don't want to be out in the hot sun all day. But from some of the things that I learned in the, the you know, ability to automate a lot of the tasks, we were able to quickly go in and change some of the ways we took data and make it a much more streamlined tool, a much more uh, interactive tool. And instead of having to type in a lot of information, a lot of times we could just go and plug and chug and just have things kind of auto-populate, which was great for us because it took less time in the field and we actually got it to where the tool was about the same as using pen and paper. So that was a really, really good um, you know, move forward for us. In fact, the tool became so robust that at, by the end of this time period, we were starting to have projects where we were strictly using our FileMaker tool for data collection. Whereas before, it was kind of like, oh, we'll try it if we want to, or you know, I would go out in the field by myself and use it because it was much easier if one person was there to use the tool than to do everything by hand. Now we had people that would just use it as part of our research projects. So that leads into um, the end of 2017, beginning of 2018 to today in 2020 and, and going beyond. Um, I say this that, you know, as part of our, um, you know, using FileMaker within the corrosion industry, we've kind of started becoming an evangelist for the corrosion community for using the FileMaker platform. And the reason why I say this is because, you know, around this time when we started really dedicating it and using it for ourselves, others began to notice. We'd go out and in our field inspections, there'd be other researchers there and they would be looking at their samples. Again, pen and paper, digital camera, writing stuff down, and they'd see us with an iPad, rapidly going through our inspections, getting done and getting out of there. And they're like, hey, this is kind of interesting. I'd really like to understand what you guys are doing. Maybe this is something we can use. And so, you know, the, the Corrosion community, just like the FileMaker community, is a very collaborative one. We all work with each other. We all, you know, try to help each other out. And so we were like, sure, here, take a look. Let's see if this will work for you guys. And when we did that, they, you know, they had some issues. They were like, hey, this doesn't quite work for us. Could we do this? Could we do that? But the basics were there. And they're like, this, this is great. This would really, really help us when we come out in the field to do our inspections. So we, you know, thinking about that, we began to modify our tools so others could use them. You know, we created something internally, something for us to use. And there was always a few quirks and a few bugs and things like that. And things, you know, didn't always just export automatically. But now we kind of had to force ourselves to think about those things and make sure those tools were in there because others were interested in using it. So we were starting to expand the use of our tool, provide it to other organizations, and they were really excited about using it. In fact, we got so much positive feedback that at the DOD Corrosion Conference at the end of 2017, I gave a FileMaker specific talk. Yeah, I talked about collecting corrosion data, but more specifically, I talked about how we use FileMaker to collect that data. And that talk was very well received. You know, the technical talks given at that conference are usually pretty well received, but I had a lot of people coming up to me just asking me about the tools I was using and asking how they could use it. Is there something that they could do? So, you know, organizations outside of ourselves began to sink us out no, you know, they would always, you know, talk to us for our technical capabilities and our expertise in the industry. But now they were also seeking us out because of what we were doing with FileMaker and the data collection that we were making. So that really became kind of a selling point of, hey, these guys know a lot about corrosion, but they also know how to get the data, turn it around quickly and keep it organized so people can use it. And towards the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, we actually started delivering FileMaker based tools to our customers. Now, these weren't the inspection tools. This is where we would take FileMaker and kind of make it as a package 
for a program. So they were able to go in and look at, say, demonstrations and things like that, pull up reports, pull up inspection files and stuff like that. So it wasn't, you know, really interactive, like you're taking data, but what it did was it gave them a consolidated source of information so they could go on an iPad and look at the entire program and review that program pretty quickly and pretty easily. So that was also pretty well received by our customers. So just to kind of sum up, I'll go through a quick timeline of FileMaker you know, within LZ and other organizations in our industry. And like I said, in 2011, it was basically myself playing with it, trying to create a little bit better inspection tool. In 2012, I took the tool, started modifying a little bit, you know, got it on iPad. That's where I started getting some other folks involved or actually one other person involved. And in 2013, we, we were playing with it a little bit more, trying to optimize it trying to see you know, how we can make it better and what we could do with it. And then comes 2014, and that's when we got that contract. So we got a third person involved because they were gonna be helping us on the field side. We wanna make sure that what we had put together would be robust and people would actually be able to use it. And so when we did that, you know, we started talking to them about you know, what could we do in the field? How would this work? How wouldn't that work? And they gave us a lot of internal feedback so we can modify the tool. Beginning of 2015, and in fact, January 2015, we hit the ground running. So basically, in about three months time, we took our, our current process, we modified it you know, to, into what became the basis of what we're doing today with the Vehicle Corrosion Survey Tool. We had eight folks within our organization who were trained up on it, ready to use it, and it was a success. We were able to go out in the field and actually collect this information pretty robustly. 2016, we added more folks in our organization for the, for the vehicle surveys. And in 17 is where we started expanding to even more people in our company to support the surveys. Also, that's where we started using the panel inspection tool more widely and, you know, actually towards the end of that period, dedicating it to some of our programs. And that's where others started to take notice of it and said, hey, can I take a look at that? And we started letting other people play with it. 18 is pretty much where we're starting to get almost full saturation in our organization and we're getting more folks interested. 19 is where basically every technical person in our organization has used FileMaker, whether it's for the vehicle surveys or for our panel inspections. And, you know, not to say that it's static at this point, but there's just kind of incremental and iterative updates to make things work a little bit better, especially as new features come out. And this is where we actually delivered our first product that, or, or our first version of the tool that was customer focused for inspections. And in 2020, that's where we are today. Again, we've completed you know, kind of full company saturation with our tools and we're starting to get it out there to other organizations, not only as an inspection tool, but as a deliverable with them being able to use it to review reports and things of that nature. And again, like I said, it's been fairly well received. So where do we go from here? So, you know, I would say that the tools that we've created with FileMaker are fairly robust and work pretty well. We could pretty much stop here and be successful for a number of years. But that's not really how, how we do things, and that's not really, you know, what FileMaker does, because every year they come out with a new feature, some new capability, and something that you really want to take advantage of. You know, I certainly look forward to every new release because there's something new in there and something in there that I think, you know, will be a, a benefit to our programs. So we continue to work with our customers and in industry on their use of FileMaker. Um, we do that as an extension of the services we provide. We don't necessarily you know, provide them as a paid or a subscription service or anything like that. You know, to us, it's part of our collaboration with these organizations and getting things kind of in the same format and collected the same manner, which is huge for us because now our programs can not only talk within our organization but across organizations as well. But there's also been you know, a lot of new developments, and specifically the in FileMaker, uh, 19 features that were just recently introduced. One of the things that we're really excited about is the machine learning capabilities. So, you know, right now we've only really started playing with it. We haven't really done a lot, but some of the machine learning models that are available, we started um, looking at for our, our survey program as a way to identify some of the parts. Because like you saw, we have a pretty wide array of folks that are using the tool. And so not everybody is familiar with all the different part names and things like that that we use, and especially as we start engaging other organizations in that, you know, we're going to spend a lot of time training folks on what parts are called. But if we can use machine learning to at least give them a hint to what these parts are called, then that'll give them a leg up so they're able to quickly and easily identify different materials, different parts. But again, like I said, we've only just started to scratch the surface. But I want to show you a short video that shows kind of what we started doing with this tool, using data that we've collected from those 230,000 parts to populate a machine learning model 
and create a pretty basic way of looking at different parts. So with that, I would like to thank you for watching this on-demand video for Claris Engage 2020. And again, I hope you feel enthusiastic about using FileMaker within your organization to solve the unique and challenging problems that you guys have. Thank you.